The promise of leaving no one behind can only be achieved if the SDG are achieved for all women, girls, men, and boys. But data for the ASEAN region shows that select groups of women are disadvantaged. For instance, women of ethnic minorities may face discrimination based on sex and ethnic background. Rural women may face discrimination based on sex and location. Women living in the poorest households may face poverty-based discrimination as well. When these forms of discrimination overlap, the barriers these women face may increase. The ASEAN Gender Outlook looks at each of the sustainable development goals through this multiple deprivation lens. Poverty rates have increased over the past year in several ASEAN countries. And in places like Cambodia and Indonesia, women are more likely than men to live below the poverty line. In Cambodia, for instance, 104 women now live in poverty for every 100 men. In Indonesia, the figure is 102. Anemia and being underweight, both measures of malnutrition are highest among people ages 15 to 19. Women are also more likely to be underweight if they live in a poor household. But the story of malnutrition in the region would be incomplete without looking at the situation of the urban population. As urban diets increasingly rely on cheap and convenient processed foods that are rich in fats, sugar and salt, but low in nutrients, population segments are increasingly overweight but malnourished. In all countries, women are worse off than men. Maternal mortality in ASEAN region has dropped from 214 to 137 deaths per 100,000 live births in the past two decades. This is partly due to increased access to healthcare, including gynecologist professionals. About 90% of deliveries in the region are now attended by skilled professionals. But for women living in the rural areas and the poorest household, this figure is much lower. 33% of their births remain unattended. Education has tremendous impact on sustainable development. In all ASEAN countries with available data, less educated women are more likely to marry early and become adolescent mothers. This often keeps them out of paid jobs and reduces their decision-making power, including in matters regarding their own health. ASEAN's younger generations are completing higher levels of schooling and gender gaps are slowly closing. But to truly achieve universal education, the region must now turn to ethnic minorities and women in remote areas. For instance, in Lao PDR, where roughly half of the female population completes education beyond primary, we find that pretty much none of the poorest women of Chinese-Tibetan ethnicity living in rural areas without roads complete education beyond primary. Some ASEAN countries are making great progress on some areas of gender equality. For instance, Vietnam, Lao PDR, and the Philippines have the region's highest female representation rates in parliament, even higher than the global average. Women in Lao PDR in the Philippines are also the most likely in the ASEAN region to be represented in local government and to be managers at work. However, a glass ceiling is still in place. Although we see parity among lower managers in Lao PDR and the Philippines, very few women hold higher level positions. Data for Southeast Asia shows some of the lowest levels in the world of prevalence of violence against women by an intimate partner. But still, between 6 and 11 percent of women in ASEAN countries report having been victims of violence against women at the hands of their partner in the past 12 months. Eliminating this behavior will require changes in social norms. An estimated 25% of women still think it's justified for a man to beat his wife if she neglects the children. Living in rural areas or remote provinces increases girls' chances of early marriage. For instance, Vietnam, which sees one of the lowest child marriage rates in ASEAN region at 11%, also sees rates as high as 32% for rural women living in the poorest household in the Central Highlands region. An estimated 92 million people in the ASEAN region have gained access to safe drinking water since the year 2000. This is a remarkable achievement, but climate change and pollution are intensifying stress on water sources. In households where basic drinking water is not available, residents must go out and fetch it. The median time to collect water for those who don't have it at home ranges between 3 and 10 minutes in the region. 
However, for rural residents, these times are longer. In Thailand, for instance, the median time to water collection is 10 minutes overall. But some rural households spend more than three hours. Women are often in charge of shouldering this burden. In Vietnam, for instance, they are in charge of water collection in 67% of households. Rapid economic development in the ASEAN region has raised economic needs. Insufficient investment on renewable energy has meant that the 80% increase in demand since 2000 has been met by a doubling in fossil fuel use. And the women, men and children living in the ASEAN countries are suffering the consequences. Air pollution is linked to heart and respiratory diseases. For pregnant women, it correlates with low birth weight, preterm birth, and small gestational age births. As women are often in charge of caring for those who are ill, these diseases affect their well-being both directly and indirectly. And yet, it is men who are seeing the bulk of economic benefits from fossil fuel production, crude petroleum, and natural gas extraction falls almost completely in the hands of men in most ASEAN countries. In ASEAN households, the use of harmful fuels such as charcoal, wood or crop waste is still widespread. Their effect on indoor air quality affects women disproportionately since they're often in charge of cooking and spending more time at home. In rural areas, and particularly in the poorest households in these areas, the chances of using harmful fuels are much higher. In the ASEAN region, 56% of women participate in the labor force, compared to 79% of men. Of those employed, an estimated 67% are engaged in the informal sector and 3% are employed but live in poverty. Initiatives to guarantee productive employment and decent work for all should target young women ages 15 to 24. In 2019, 24% of them were outside of school but had no jobs, compared to 13% of young men. Attention should also be placed on women with children, who often step out of the labor market to take care of unpaid domestic and care responsibilities. Only 33% of mothers with newborns have access to benefits in the ASEAN region. In most countries in the region, with the exception of Malaysia and Myanmar, men hold the majority of research jobs. This may result in innovation that fails to meet women's needs. The gender gaps are largest in the field of engineering and technology. Similarly, men are also more likely to be engaged in information-related jobs. Promoting women's involvement in information and communication jobs could help promote the development of innovation and infrastructure that better fits women's needs. ASEAN countries have furthered gender equality in recent years, but women and girls living in poor rural households are still far from achieving most of the SDGs. This goes back to the concept of multiple forms of discrimination clustering together. Rural poorest women living in remote provinces lag the furthest behind across multiple dimensions, from basic education to healthcare, clean energy, and water. Let's take a look at Indonesia, for instance. The shaded area shows values for the totality of women in Indonesia. For instance, it shows that 23% of women and girls lack access to clean cooking fuels. Almost 24% are child brides and 29% are education poor, meaning they complete only primary at most. When we look at the same indicators for poorest women and girls living in rural households in select provinces such as Banten, the solid pink line, 93% of them lack access to clean cooking fuels, 52% marry as children, and 77% are education poor. The gaps are even more striking when we compare with the urban richest women and girls in Jakarta, the gray line. None of them lack access to clean fuels. This example illustrates that it is the same group of women and girls, in this case, the rural poor expanding women and girls, that lag the furthest behind across many aspects of sustainable development. And we found the same to be true for all of the ASEAN countries where data was available for this type of analysis. In many cities across the ASEAN region, large shares of residents live in slums, an estimated 40% of the urban population. Female slum dwellers are particularly vulnerable as they often have to deal with water collection and cook with harmful fuels. For instance, 21% of all female slum dwellers in the Philippines have to walk more than 30 minutes to fetch water 
compared to 3.7% of women urban non-slum residents. Similarly, 36% of women slum residents cook with unclean fuels compared to 15% of their urban non-slum counterparts. Men in ASEAN countries are notoriously overrepresented in highly polluting industrial activities, such as mining and manufacturing of plastics and chemical products. Women, on the other hand, have a bigger say pertaining to household consumption. In more than 90% of cases, women have the final say on smaller household purchases. To preserve the region's remarkable biodiversity and the health and quality of life of its people, it's important that both men and women play a part by making sustainable production and consumption choices. ASEAN countries have seen an increase in frequency and magnitude of drought and flood episodes over the past decades as a result of climate change. For women who depend disproportionately on natural resources for their livelihoods, this has important consequences. In Lao PDR, for instance, as many as 64% of employed women are engaged in agriculture. Their livelihoods are at stake. In addition, environmental changes such as increased aridity will increase their time burden. In Cambodia, the only ASEAN countries where seasonal data is available, the proportion of people who lack basic water services more than doubles during the dry season. As climate change intensifies aridification, these burdens may increase further. In Cambodia and Malaysia, for instance, women make up as many as 57% of those involved in fish harvest and post-harvest operations. Post-processing, in particular, is largely concentrated in women's hands, with more than half of all processing and preserving of fish carried out by women. Furthermore, coastal tourism drives much of the tourism revenue in many ASEAN countries, which represents 18% of all exports in Thailand and 9% in the Philippines. Women are also more likely than men to engage in tourism-related jobs. With so many women whose livelihoods are dependent on the ocean, it is important that ASEAN countries place marine conservation at the center of their development priorities. ASEAN countries are home to 15% of the world's tropical forests, but also see the most alarming devastation rates in the world. Due to industrialization, locking and damaging agricultural practices such as monoculture of palm oil and rubber, the proportion of total land area occupied by forests has dropped from 52 to 48% in the last 20 years. As a result, the share of degraded land in the region currently stands at 24%. Over the past decades, men have abandoned many of these degraded lands and migrated to urban areas to find jobs, leaving women in charge of repurposing it. While women are often the users of agricultural land, holdings are still concentrated in the hands of men. In Indonesia, Lao PDR, and the Philippines, an estimated of 90% of agricultural holders are men. This often means that it is men who make decisions on crop selection, pesticide use, and resource use, which have significant consequences for biodiversity loss and land degradation. In 2020, Indonesia alone sent more than 2,600 troops and other personnel to UN peacekeeping missions. In almost every ASEAN country, however, more male than female officers are being deployed. Promoting women's participation in national security institutions and among personnel deployed to peacekeeping operations can help enhance the safety of women across the region and beyond, as female victims of crime and conflict may feel more comfortable seeking help from fellow women in security forces. ASEAN countries have made substantial progress when it comes to data availability to monitor the SDGs from a gender perspective. Across sectors, gender data is increasingly available for socioeconomic indicators, but largely missing for environmental indicators. In a region where women depend so heavily on natural resources and where natural disasters occur with a high frequency, the availability of these data cannot be understated. It is also essential that all ASEAN member states prioritize the production of gender data disaggregated at multiple levels to ensure the achievement of the promise to leave no one behind.
To promote its availability, key steps could include national development strategy that put this issue at their center, adequate availability of human and financial resources for gender data production, capacity building for producing gender estimates, enhancing the use of such data by decision makers and advocates. More data about gender-related SDG progress in the ASEAN region and how COVID-19 may be affecting SDG progress is available in our Gender Outlook. You can find out more information here.